three, two, one. Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our first look at the upcoming Tier 7 Russian battleship, the Borodino. Uh, first of all, let's go over how you get this ship. Right now it is currently a uh, available to test. I know I say don't worry, like I wouldn't personally worry about like buying these in the test. Uh, but if you want to know where they're at, just go over here to ships and then all the way to the right to ships for test. It's a thousand gold. Uh, you do get a coupon for a thousand gold off of a battleship. Uh, but, but it is a thousand gold. So you get this rental for seven days from what I understand. So just don't, don't worry about throwing your money at it right now. I'd say wait until it comes out. It'll likely come out next patch, which will be January something. Okay, I just want to get that out of the way before people yell at me. All right, so first of all, let's get into the build. We are running Lev Galler with Andrew Cunningham and Azure Lane Sharnhorst. We are running Flamble Cannoneer, gyrating drill bits. Uh, I would swap this out for marksmanship because you don't need this. Uh, this, this particular battleship has unlimited damage controls, so you don't have to worry about it. So... In the videos that you're going to see, I will have collective labor on. It's just simply because I forgot to come in and switch it. I didn't realize when I took this thing out that it was going to have unlimited damage cons. So definitely would go with uh, marksmanship there. And then reaching out XXL is, is pretty nice. Uh, of course, we've got fight fire with fire on there as well. Um, pretty standard accuracy build overall. And I, I do believe most people will want to build this thing for accuracy. Uh, though there is a case to be made for going with a brawler build and getting more heals because this thing has a fantastic heal. All right, but we are running aiming systems mod one. We're running propulsion mod. We're running concealment system mod, and we are running the main battery mod three, which allows us to get a uh, and it's the epic version, so it allows us to get faster reload for every thirty thousand damage we do. All right. So, for the loadout, like I said, the heal is very good. Uh, it heals 719 per second for 20 seconds. It's, it's very good. It's a very good heal, especially for the Russians. You get three of them stock, so if you go with a brawler build, you get that up to five, and you have five nasty heals, uh, taking this thing into contention for one of the, the nastiest Tier 7 battleships out there. Um, and that's tongue-in-cheek. Uh, we do have an enhanced secondary targeting booster, uh, which I think is absurd. Uh, but you do get, you, you, you do get radar. So at least you have that. Why they give this thing an enhanced secondary targeting is beyond me, but, uh, we'll go over why it's so stupid here in a minute. Um, flag, we're running the Italian unity flag because as you guys know by now, if you squint just right, it looks kind of like a Spartan flag. Um, we're running the type nine camo that comes with the ship. Specs, survivability is a little bit on the lower side in terms of maximum hit points. It's got 64,200 hit points. Though, uh, that's a little bit uh, to be expected considering your heal is so good. So you actually do have uh, a little bit better than you'd expect. And then 24% damage reduction as well for Torps. Um, main battery, you get two 406mm 50 caliber B37 Mark 1s. Uh, so two, two triple turrets, so you get six guns total, but they're all at the front. So you always have, this is the, this is the Russian John Bart, and there's no way to put it otherwise. And it's better because it's a 406 millimeter gun. So personally, uh, the one thing it isn't, it doesn't have is a reload booster. And it also has two less guns than the John Bart. But I don't think you guys are going to struggle too much with this ship if you know what you're doing. Okay, so um, reload time is 25.2 seconds, which is fantastic for 406 millimeter guns. Okay. And that's not a reload build, okay? That's that's just what it is. Uh, 180 degree turn time, also pretty good for a battleship at 27.3 seconds. So there's, the guns are pretty much always where you need them when you need them. Uh, I actually will show you guys two clips, two videos of uh, this ship in action in this video. So hopefully you guys are ready. I'm going to show you guys a double feature. I know, it's crazy. Uh, but that just means i got to speed up here. HE shell maximum fire chance, or maximum fire damage is 6,047 with a 40% chance of set fires. AP shell maximum damage is pretty nasty as well with 14,850. 
uh, putting it, I believe, in second place uh, behind the Georgia in terms of overall AP damage. Okay. AA Defense. You get a 71 rating, uh, but it's it's not bad. 25mm 4M 120s, you get 48 of those doing 101 damage per second, reaching out 3.1. That's your close in air, or AA. Then you have the 57mm ZIF 31B, you get 24 of those doing 212 damage per second, reaching out to 4 kilometers, which is pretty solid. And then you have the 180mm 65 caliber SM45 um, dual purpose secondaries uh, that you get 4 of doing 35 damage per second, reaching out to 5 kilometers. And that's, oh yeah, that's probably where we should have probably talked about your secondaries. The reason I didn't talk about your secondaries is because you only have two. <laughs> you have you have four barrels total on this thing, and they're at the back. You have 180 millimeter 65 caliber SM45s. Uh, you get four of them in total. Four barrels, that's it. With a maximum firing range of 5.2 kilometers, a reload time of six seconds. I know they're 180 millimeters, but damn, that's kind of ridiculous. Um... HE shell, you get four barrels. I think they could reload a little faster, but you know, what do I know? Again, I get it. They're 180 mil. They're going to do some damage when they do hit, but it is funny to me. Uh, but 2,500 maximum HE shell damage with a 13% chance that fires. Maneuverability. With this build, obviously, we're a little slower, so 27.9 knots. Uh, you could take that up a little bit if you were so inclined. Uh, rudder shift is terrible with a turning circle that is also terrible. 1,060 meters. This thing gives the uh, the gross a curve first and the Montana a run for its money when it comes to turning. So keep that in mind. All right. You're going to get in trouble if you're not careful. Detection by C is 13.3. So very good. Uh, I say very good. I'd say it's average. Uh, with concealment mod, it's pretty average. Detectability by air, 11.2. Guaranteed detectability is always 2, and then detectability while firing and smoke is 14.9. Let's look at the stats. I have a 100% win rate in three battles. I know, small sample size, keep that in mind, folks. What I need you guys to always pay attention to in this particular screen is A, main gun accuracy, so almost 50%. That is insane, especially for a Russian battleship. It's ridiculous. But that also shows that I've been up close and personal and uh, been dealing, dealing damage at people that are very close. Uh, but average results per battle, warships destroyed, a 3 to 1 KDR. Damage to ships, almost 130,000 average damage. That is legendary tier damage, average, okay? Put that into perspective. That is Yamato, that is, you know, I don't I think my Ohio might be more than that. But Montana, like that is, that is the kind of damage output that we're looking at at tier 7, all right? Uh, average XP again, 2,387. That's going to be a slightly high just due to the fact that we haven't lost yet. Um, but you can see potential damage as well. 780 is a little lower than expected, but that's mainly because the, the teams that I've been going up against have been sus at best. Uh, armor. This thing is a battle cruiser when it comes to armor, but it's got a very good extended belt. So that saves you a little bit, but that 25 millimeter bow is going to bite you in the butt. Uh, on multiple occasions, and I'll explain why. First of all, we have an extra uh, an extra wave break here in the front, which would lead me to believe that it was supposed to have an extra turret there, but as you can see by the turret, the barrel's reaching all the way into that extra wave break. Uh, you wouldn't really be able to get another turret in there, unfortunately, uh, unless the gun, like, permanently had, had its guns elevated or something like that. I don't know. Uh, wouldn't it wouldn't work out but uh, 25 millimeters is a horrendous amount of um armor just due to the fact that everything overmatches it pretty much anything 15 inches and above is going to overmatch 25 mil and why is that such a bad thing in this case well if anything at uh, medium to long range hits the bow of this ship you do have what we call a uh, very reachable citadel now you can see the torpedo blister. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. We'll get rid of the guns because we don't need to care about any of that. What we're caring about is this gigantic armor. Uh, you've got a you've got the armor deck or the case made here. Uh, that's one thing. So you've got decent decent side armor, but the problem is some of that side armor is actually your citadel. So keep that in mind. It is uh, 220. Hold that thought. Yeah, I think it's 220 millimeters. 
uh, thick. So as long as you angle it, you should be fine. But just keep in mind that this thing will get absolutely yeeted, just like every other Russian battleship, if it goes broadside. But notice how large and wide that citadel is. This is why the, uh, the plunging fire can be a problem. You can see how accessible that plunging fire is or that citadel is with plunging fire through that 25 millimeters of bow armor. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go overview. Long reach, so it's got good range for the guns. Uh, I don't think you're going to want to go like crazy range in this thing. I think you want to be kind of mid-range. Remember that the uh, battleships for the Russians get a little bit of an uh, accuracy boost inside 12 kilometers. So you definitely want to be at that medium, medium range-ish. I don't know if you want to be necessarily as close as I end up getting in this thing, but, but definitely want to be at least medium range. Uh, superior AP damage, talk, we already talked about, and then the superior AP penetration, as you'd expect from the Russians, they tend to have higher velocity guns, so they, they pin, they go through. Borodino, a small battleship project developed in the early 1950s, with main armament consisting of several heavy guns concentrated at her fore end. Such ships were designed to act in groups and cope with any full-fledged battleship. Year of design was 1952, but she was never built. Uh, I will say this, if this thing looks familiar to you, it probably is because this thing is essentially a, a Lenin and a, um, a Stalingrad had a baby. Basically. That, that's what this is. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's a situation where very good looking ship by the way. I do like battleships with the really long long like banana front. You know a fast battleship by the fact that the the bow kind of raises up out of the water to keep the waves off of the off the deck. Don't want your deck awash during the middle of going you know 30 knots. But uh, it is very good looking ship. I got a lot. I ain't gonna lie. And the camo is fantastic. Love that. Uh, very Stalingrad esque. Uh, camo, but but its own own little thing, and uh, yeah, I really like this thing so far. I've played three games in it, and I will probably be picking this up. This uh, this is up there in terms of best battleships for the tier in terms of uh, performance so far. It is a bit squishy, so keep that in mind. But if you angle this thing correctly, like the squishiness doesn't really matter, and we'll show some of that uh, in the videos coming up. So with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so in the first game you're going to see, we're going to be in the Atlantic, and uh, we're just going to showcase, you know, A, what happens when people just underestimate this ship or any battleship, and for that that matter. Uh, we're going to have all the potatoes in this one, I'm not going to lie. Um, you love to see it, as, as anybody would in this game. Like, if you get into the positions that we're going to get into in this one, uh, we also get bailed out by a teammate later on, but I'll, I'll talk about that when we get there. But, uh... We are going to have just an absolute blast here. Um, we're going to push off to the left side. Obviously, we spawned here, so we're going to go far left. Uh, I don't like to push straight in over here because it tends to be a destroyer over here, and I don't like to just get myself yeeted. Plus, uh, if you push in too quickly on this side, you tend to get focused by everybody on the map because everybody spawns in at the, the same place, roughly. There's usually a couple people closer to this side, a couple people closer to the opposite side, but for the most part, everybody's within reach. As you can see, our, our main guns reach pretty much the entire map. So, uh, yeah. You, you don't want to go putting yourself out there, and that's one of the reasons I hate this map. Like, Atlantic is, is such a bad map. It just is. Like, it's so annoying. But, once you, once you get to a point where you can f comfortably push in, like, you can break the stalemate and end up with some crazy games because of it. But uh, as you can see, we're going to push off to the left side. We're going to round around the island. We're going to go forward. Um, keep in mind that we are not currently spotted. And we're not actually going to get spotted for a moment. Uh, despite me being a little hesitant here, because I know that I want to push around the edge. So I don't want to get spotted uh, initially. But I do end up, uh, you know, putting my feelers out there. A lot of times you'll see me fire my guns in a position where you're like, why are you shooting at this guy? Like, you're not going to get any damage. All you're going to do is get yourself spotted. Well, sometimes that's the point. I want to know where roughly teammates or bad guys are, right? So we're not currently spotted. And you can see I'm kind of waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Um, there's very few opportunities for anybody to spot me here if I fire my guns. 
Um, one of them being over in their cap, but you can see I'm kind of shielded by the island there. This one drops in over the top of the island. We could do a couple of thousand damage, no big deal. But we didn't get spotted. And that tells me that nobody's in that little gap right in front of the Vladdy. Um, so now I'm looking at, you can see where I'm looking straight ahead. I'm like, okay, well, then there's a good chance that we're about to find uh, a bad guy off our left side. Now here we have the Atlantico. We take the shot at him. We're no longer, we're not spotted there either. So whoever's here, and you can see I just took over location from somebody. So there is, a, there is likely a destroyer coming. We know that uh, Perceptive or Twist and Track is, is definitely something that is very, very much a destroyer thing. Though cruisers can have it as well, and uh, there's not very many cruisers in this match. So we go ahead and we radar when we get spotted here and catch the little turd burglar coming around the island. And now we've got him in open water. Now, I was hoping that we would be able to absolutely punish this guy. And you can see his shots out, looks accurate as crap, and we, we land one shot. I, you know, it's enough to make you want to throw your controller sometimes. But uh, fortunately, the battleship behind us, he's a little more accurate, I say, as he misses the, the extra shot. But he did some damage to the guy. And that amount of damage is going to be enough to make this Akatsuki go, You know what? I ain't about that life. I'm just going to run away. And that's perfect for me because, honestly, I don't want to deal with him. He doesn't want to deal with me. So, uh, you know, it's mutually... Owie! Somebody just citadeled us for 12,000 damage. I don't know who it was, but it hurt. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna turn in and go bow into the battleships that are over to my right. And if I had to guess, I would say it's the Synop who is you know looking directly at me while sailing broadside. Well, let's try to showcase why that sailing broadside and then knocking on somebody's door is a bad idea, shall we? Bonk. Yeah, there you go. Twenty-four thousand damage, three pins. Not too shabby. Our first Citadel in this ship so far. Not too bad. We're going to go ahead and continue to get away from that destroyer as best we can. The battleship is going to hang back a little bit. And you can see the rest of my team there uh, hugging the island is a little bit sus. I ain't going to lie. There's nothing here that should stop our guys from pushing in here. The destroyer's here, yeah, and you can see he's kind of hanging out in that left corner, keeping us spotted here and there. But it's actually not him that's spotting us. It's actually the Friesland. And as soon as the Friesland fires his guns, it's going to show. So, uh, yeah, it's, you'll see the Friesland and I believe the Atlantico light up here in a moment. Uh, our, our Atlantico takes down the enemy in ult, uh, but you can see that uh, there's the Friesland. We have them spotted. We're like, okay, sweet. I, I can help get rid of a prolific fire starter, a.k.a. somebody who can also kill a uh, destroyer. So any chance that we have to remove that is ideal. We take the shot. He's reversing, and we look away because cool people don't need to look at explosions. Bonk. So there's our, our first kill of the game. Now look at what we're about to go up against. There's a enemy Toulon here and I'll be honest that was not what I was expecting and this guy is going to be a bit of a scary scary person for me because he's very fast. I don't know if you guys know this but he's very very fast. Uh, I can't shoot him he's going to reverse but look at our, our buddy in the synop. He's like you know what the best side is broadside. Well Stalin sends his regards. Oh my god, how does he live that? I want my money back. <laughs> Clearly this ship is terrible. How the heck is that man still alive? We only got two Citadels there. I don't know if I just aimed too high or what, but it doesn't matter because this guy's not this guy's not long for this world. Let's be real. He's still sailing broadside. Oh but he's angled slightly smart. It don't matter. Good night. And our fourth citadel. And that's when the Toulon is like, I'm about that life, and I'm like, oh god. Engine boost active, he's he's coming in. I know what he's going for. We need to get this ship angled immediately. And this is where that turning radius comes in uh, and bites us in the butt. But here's where the great the great lack of DPM of the, the French, um, whatever you call these things, battle cruisers. Uh, that's where these things come in handy. Look at those secondaries at the back of the ship, how useful they are. Uh, yeah, not, not useful at all, right? I'm not going to lie, I was going to die here. I, I was legitimately about to die by ramming of this little turd waffle. Fortunately, the Veneto behind me finishes him off and saves saves me the embarrassment of dying to a French whatever that is. Now, you can see I was initially looking for the uh, destroyer here. I did radar just to kind of see if, if he was stalking us. He ain't even in range to be to be radar. That man went all the way around the outside of the map and is, is heading for our base right now, which is pathetic. 
Uh, but, you know, is what it is. We're going to come around the corner and we're going to introduce ourselves to the Vladivostok that's left here. Um, and I don't think anybody needs to guess how that's going to go. Let's be real. You're this close, and you can see the, the radar from our cruiser at the back as well. You're this close to a broadside Russian battleship. I know he is slightly angled, but it doesn't matter, as we, we showed with the Synop. Like, at these ranges, we're going to pin straight through that and citadel the ever-living crap out of you. i got to wait till I get around the island first. Don't want to derp my shells into the island. And, yep, that's, that's GG's. Goodbye. Bonk. <laughs> Another two citadels for seven citadels in one match. Can we have some more, please? Uh, we're going to go ahead and speed this up into this, this match for you guys so that you guys don't have to like sit here and watch. There's another Bord Borodino right next to us, so uh, you'll love to see that. But uh, personally, so far, I'm enjoying this ship, uh, which is more than I can say. I don't hate the Russian battleships as much as a lot of people say, like, oh, Spartan doesn't like it. He only likes American ships. I, I don't hate the Russian battleships. I just don't like to use them in the sense of... They have limited damage controls, they're usually very big and very bulky, and uh, their accuracy is sus at best, but the accuracy in this particular ship seems to be pretty decent most of the time. There, there are some sus salvos, but 135k, not too shabby. Now we're going to move on to the main event, and uh, we're going to showcase this thing as a bottom tier against a repub and a couple of other bad guys out here, as well as some destroyers. It's going to be a good showcase of the strengths and the weakness of the ship. So uh, remember, 64,200 hit points is the start, but uh, you did see a little bit of just how good the heal is uh, on this thing. This thing can heal quite a bit of health back, so you'll love to see that. But anyway, we're going to start on the right side. We're going to go forward. You guys know the deal. I don't play around. Um, I want you guys to pay attention to our destroyer as well. This, de this destroyer, he, he plays like a typical destroyer player. Absolutely zero situational awareness from this this destroyer player, um, and you'll you'll see why I say that in a moment. But we're gonna push forward, try to get ourselves into a good position. Again, I've got another Italian battleship next to me, um, and you'll see how how well that goes for us. We we have uh, we have another another good battleship. I say, I, I say tongue in cheek, because what he does initially is very very nice. But uh, after that, eh, you know, it, it isn't a whole lot. But uh, you'll you'll see. We're gonna push forward, try to get to the the part where we can protect ourselves from the left. And with the guns all being forward, the best part about a design like this is that you don't have to overangle. Now here we have a beautiful look at an anchorage. I don't know why these people think that this is the best play, but he comes out and fortunately for him I had terrible RNG. I only hit him with three rounds, but uh, the SAP comes in quickly afterwards and absolutely neuters him uh, and leaves him with just enough to smoke up and get away. Now we are six seconds away from being able to uh, shoot the man and we know that he's in range so we're just going to uh, take a shot into the smoke. I didn't want to burn my radar here. I, I wanted to try to get rid of him. Now, fortunately for us, we didn't get pinned from the guys on the left. We did get two overpins. Didn't manage to finish off the guy. Uh, now we go ahead and activate our radar because I want to finish off the anchorage. But I wanted my teammate to do that. Um, but you can see we do spot the Akazuki coming in, right? Right? Like that is something that every destroyer player should know. Now here, rather than focusing the, the Roma that's pushing in or the repub out there, uh, we go for the guy that's the fire spammer, the DPM guy. Get rid of him, and you can see we're taking a lot of damage from the, the um, repub and the Roma here. We've lost about half our hit points in that trade. Uh, not ideal, but it's not the worst thing that could happen. We do know that there's a destroyer coming in, so in my mind... Our destroyer would go, okay, there's a there's a gunboat DD coming in. I should probably, you know, consider not getting myself into trouble. That doesn't cross his mind. Uh, I do commend him for the fact that he stays in and caps the base, but maybe do so in a position where you're not going to get yeeted next time. Um, but here you can see Repub is angled pretty well away from us. So we're just going to aim high, try to get as many shells on target as possible. He is opening the angle to turn towards us, so... We could probably get a couple of shells, and there you go. Actually, a really good salvo there of HE. Uh, I forgot that we had loaded HE just in case we got YOLO rushed by the Akazuki. So we get a uh, nice little perma fire on the repub, so you got to love that. Uh, and again, Italian battleship that's out there. I think it's Italian. I think it's shooting SAP at people. So uh, anyway, 
you can see Akazuki once again spotted. Our Z44 is right there in the open. Has like zero survival instinct, right? Zero survival instinct. Now here, I wish I had held my shot for the Roma. I did not see the Roma making this play. Look at this shot. God bless America. If I had had, he ain't even looking at me. He's not even looking in my direction. He's looking out at the destroyer. If I had had my AP still loaded, this man's a dead man. Of course, that would probably be the salvo where all the shells fall short, right? <laughs> you got a guy full broadside, guaranteed dev strike at that range. And guaranteed that would be the one where the shells hit the water or, or only land one shell for a citadel and every other shell drops short. You know, you know what I'm talking about. We've all been there. But uh, we get another good hit on the repub as a parting gift. The Roma has turned away. Uh, he's now in a position where he's trying to run. We've got the destroyer in the cap with us, which is not ideal. But uh, we do have another radar coming up in about a minute. So we're going to try to push forward, try to help get that destroyer out of here. Our destroyer is still alive. So this just goes to show how long it takes these people to like. There is no reason. I, I, I get it. But there is no reason for you to put your destroyer in that situation. Like, you know that you cannot win a gunfight with that, that Akazuki. Now, I commend the effort of trying to, like, stop him from capping, but let's be real. This guy was always going to struggle to get this side of the map. But, uh, I am about to have to go full throttle towards the, uh, the right side here and uh, help with the destroyer but i have to give up a lot of broadside to do so so i try to wait until everybody's shot at me before i really commit to the turn and you can see i'm just keeping my eye on them i know i should be helping with the destroyer right now but i can't i, I gotta keep my eye on the people that are potentially going to eat me and uh, unfortunately our our z goes down shocker uh, but we do have a beautiful look at this Akazuki who's about to change course. So we go ahead and we aim for his front gun to get as many shells on target as possible. We get a good hit. We do have our radar available, so if he does decide to smoke up, we have that. Uh, he goes dark, so we're going to go ahead and radar for our other battleship to help shoot at the guy. Remember, he does have SAP, so if either of us is going to do way more damage, it'll be him, right? So we've got the guy spotted. We've got enough time for our, our guns to get loaded here. He takes a lot of damage from the uh, the Italian battleship. We're going to wait for the turn. And as soon as he commits to the turn, we take the shot and we get absolutely screwed on RNG. Once again, showcasing that well, exactly what I was talking about. The guarantee kill shot. And that's the one where all the shells drop into the water. Um, now, I tried to wait for the guy to commit to his left turn. And maybe he straightened out just enough and it was enough to juke the auto-aim in the game. Because remember, despite what you think, despite where you're aiming, the game will always have the the uh, like lead in mind. It will always try to lead a ship. So Destroyer's doing those little jukes or those jeeks uh, or deeks, whatever you want to call them. Depends on what sport you're in. Um, those little jukes that they do throws the aiming system of the game off so bad which is why i always try to wait for them to commit because if they don't commit you'll likely just end up hating life but here we get a beautiful look at the roma and uh, i think we aimed a little too far forward uh he started to turn in at the last second so we didn't get as much damage as we'd like but that was still fourteen thousand damage and he's he's not long for this world as well and we did unfortunately have to use our last radar and we already know where this is going Roma does get the rolling smoke nowadays. So uh, we take a shot here, trying to get up into the superstructure. You can see, not quite as good as we were hoping for. Probably hit a couple of the guns or something, maybe AA mounts or something. I don't know, but a lot of the damage was absorbed by other things that weren't actually giving damage. But Roma, he fires his guns and then smokes up. Like, you gotta understand how your smoke works. And honestly, had this Roma, had this Roma actually, um, like not fired his guns and then smoked if he'd have just like stayed visible and then as uh he let as he hadn't fired his guns decided to smoke up i think he would have had a much better time here because now he can't see me i can't see him but i can see where the smoke is leading so you can see i'm gonna have my guns in the best position i can possibly have them uh, for when he inevitably gets spotted, whether it be by being too close to me or whatever. But remember, we don't turn very well. We also have a raised citadel, so we got to make sure that we're angled as best we can, and we gotta we gotta start that turn as soon as possible. Now here, you can see I get the shot off, and this man somehow shoots from the grave. I don't understand it. I can only call it is uh, shooting 
after you're dead because of lag, you know, server lag. Because that man was dead long before those guns ever turned to a position where he could shoot me. And somehow he still got the full broadside off. You, you figure that one out for me. Those guns were pointing directly forward. I took the shot. He was dead. And somehow he still crapped out all of a full broadside at me. Fortunately, I was angled enough. Took very minimal damage in the process. Um, what happens next can only be described as uh, I, I, the worst ismo I have ever seen in my life. And I'm not trying to name and shame. It's nothing like that. It's just in general. When you see what this person does, you'll understand. So right out the gate, we're like, okay, broadside ismo. Just aim high. We know he's got good belt armor, so we just want to get as many pins as possible. Repub is running away from us. Shocker. Uh, we knock out a couple of his guns. No big deal. He'll end up damage con in that most likely. Um, but as we push closer, you'll you'll notice he's getting, he's got no camo. So there's there's clue number one. Uh, probably first time ever playing the ship, so uh, he has no idea what he's doing. But uh, he he turns in at the last second, so he gets he gets to avoid any damage there, which is good. But uh, the repub ends up taking down our. Uh, our ship and our ship ends up trading with the repub so repub's gone and that just leaves this ismo who i can only describe it as he's got bismarck syndrome he, he's he's clearly been attacked by a british swordfish and has a jammed rudder right now because this man is sailing in circles and i i do mean that he's legitimately just sailing in circles he's, he's out here full rudder the entire time he doesn't know what he wants to do can't commit to a side he is flanked on all sides and uh, so he goes full broadside to me and i'm salivating at this point i'm like okay well i should be able to punch him pretty good here even if i don't manage to citadel him and sure enough we do and we destroy one of his turrets in the process you gotta love it but not to be outdone he's like you know in the bible it says when an enemy smites you on the left cheek to turn the other cheek, so what does he do? He just turns the other cheek. He lets the guys on the left shoot his left side. Now, he turns all the way back around for me to shoot his starboard side. So we just patiently wait for our opportunity. As he comes out of his turn, he's over-angled once again. We take a shot at horrendous RNG. Uh, you just love it. It's always the shots that are supposed to be like the easiest in the world that end up just being the most sus. When it comes to RNG, it, I, and this is where the the thing where we always talk about like the game protects bad players. This is exactly what we're talking about. Like there is no reason for this guy to still be alive, none. But fortunately for us, you can only do that for so long, and eventually, we get the rail guns, and that finishes him off. But uh, pretty solid game there. Again, I personally am enjoying this ship. I think it's easily one of the better ones. I don't think it's quite as good as Lennon, though. You could argue it is better than Lennon due to the fact that Lennon has the limited damage controls. So, it's up to you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited for this thing's release? And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.